Oh, you sure? Was that me? We have seals on the line. Of course, I'll get it. Don't you think this oh. it sounds like seal? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Oh, that's loud. I can. All right, somebody's going to. I'm going to sing a song. Yeah, it's going to. Oh, well, it's really loud. Anyway, Janice, are we live? All set. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to call to order the uh, Town of Kimden Select Board meeting for November 29th, 2022. As an uh, upfront note on our uh, streaming, we are streaming on YouTube this evening as well as uh, Spectrum Cable TV Channel 1303. And we are also have a, a availability of a link for our webinar. The link can be found in the Camden, Town of Kimden website under the Select Board. Uh, call up a separate agenda or packet, and on the agenda you'll see the link. Um, please feel free to, to do so and, and join as an attendee. If you do, we'd appreciate very much if you'd like to participate to raise your hand. That's the preferred method. You can ask questions or make comments as you will. Do not use a chat function. The Q&A function you can use, of course, but we may not get to all the questions, to, to, and if they're not, they're not a matter of record, just, for, just so you understand. With that, I will call to order the agenda. And the first item is public comment on non-agenda items. And since there's no one here from the public, I will assume there's no one going to speak to it and no raised hands. So what? they can't hear us, and see, or, nor can they see us, apparently. They're, uh, on YouTube? On YouTube, YouTube says saying. it's waiting. OK, we'll just, give it a second. Just, OK. Just I, I know it's, it's fine. Oh, it says watch live now, Town of Camden, Maine Planning Board, 11-17-22. I just got a... Really? I just got a YouTube, like, notification. Oh. <clears throat> I can start it from... I think we should start from here. Go ahead, because I've got a recording right now. Okay. Hold on, hold on. That All right, stop. sure, and, sure. And 1303 is not working either. Hmm. Yeah, well, not. That's weird. So it's asking me to log in again here. Okay. Um, does anybody remember this? And the code? I mean, I can find it. I just. I have it here. I think of my case. I had it. What do you need? Uh, I'll give you two password. Um, the hell am I doing? I know I have it. Janice, do you have that memorized? Yeah, it's candy. We want to say it on the. I mean, I don't think it's that. Main With capitals? Yeah, capitals and capitals. I guess Jeremy's the only one on YouTube. That's on correct. Zoom right now, so we should that, be That's correct. I think it's working now. Oh, really? She says, Mother recognizes your scarf, so she must see me. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, then let's not. Now you'll know everything. All right, well, so then let's not start okay. a second screen. No, let's not. No. Let's not. Let's continue to move forward with okay. a repeat the uh, um, call. If, it, mean, if it's not, let me know. We can. We, one way or another. Yeah, a yes or a no. What color is the scarf? <laughs> <laughs> what color is the rose in Bob's hair? No, I'm not seeing it. Okay, I'm just going to. Okay, go ahead. No. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Twenty two. I'm gonna have somebody see us because she recognized this car. 
Well, she, unless she saw you walking out the door. I don't know. It's live, it says, it says live streamed. We're, li we're live streaming, according let's, to my computer. Let's go ahead. Mm -hmm. We are uh, repeating again the call to order on the, on the first time the agenda was public comment on non-agenda items, and we have no one from the public here, and I see no raised hands on Zoom. So we will proceed to item two, which is the approval of the board minutes from November 15th, 2022. Any comments from the board or a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve the... I make a motion we approve the minutes from the November 15, 2022 board meeting. I'll second that. Motion made and second. Any comments from anyone? Not hearing any others in favor? 5-0. Thank you. Uh, item three is a one public hearing uh, for the application of long grain at 20 Washington Street for the renewal of a class one liquor license. Um, not seeing anyone here from the public or, or anybody's raised their hand in the public from the Zoom. Um, I will not address the normal process because the public hearing is obviously, purpose is to get the board to get input from the public on any matter at hand. Since we don't have that, I will close the public hearing, uh, public process under the public hearings and revert to select board deliberation directly. Any comments on the application or, or, applica or uh, a motion to approve board? I'll make a motion to approve the liquor license for Long Green. I second. Motion made and second. Any comments? Not seeing any, all those. I, I just have one yes. brief one. Uh, yes, the, go ahead. The yes. background check has been done, right? Correct. But we are still, it, the signed form will be added to the, correct. To the form. Correct. Okay. Just, just in, in the package. It, it, that's correct. The police department has approved the background check. Okay. Any other comments, board? All's in favor? 5-0, thank you. On to our action items. The first item is the approval of the renewal uh, taxi cab business license for craft delivery and taxi at 11 Main Street. Comments or motion to approve? So moved. I second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the board? All's in favor? 5-0, thank you. Uh, now we have the, um, um, the uh, review and, of course, approval or ch modification to the proposed calendar for select board meetings for calendar 2023, which is in your packet. Um, I hope you've all had a chance to look at that. As you all know already that, the, you know, in general, the charter specifies that our meetings will be the first and third Thursdays of each month, and that's pretty much what this schedule is based on. However, there are uh, occasional holidays that will cause that situation to be modified. But uh, are there any comments from the board on the schedule? The only uh, comment I have is the July 5th one. July 5th, 6th? 5th. I'm sorry, July 5th, day at the 4th of July. 4th of July is on a Tuesday. Correct. Proposal is to have it on the 5th. Correct. Will we, does anybody know at this point if we'll have a quorum on that night? I'm sure I'll be, I'll be around. You won't, you you won't, won't be, be there. Here. Okay, mm -hmm. good to know. Anybody else have a problem with that date? Like if you know, I know. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't have a problem with I mean, I don't have a problem with any date on so here. I don't have a problem with changing it if Stephanie wants to change it. Right. Yeah. Maybe I won't even be here. Um. <laughs> So that's the awkward part of this, too, the way we do this. So, so exactly. So post-June, we don't know who's going to be on the board. Right, exactly. That's correct. So, that's I correct. mean, I think we should make a note that you won't be here. Okay. But, yeah. uh, and maybe address it. Well, there, there, there are times when well, we we're going to miss a board meeting. Yeah. And, but to Stephanie's point, if we have a danger of we know in advance of a, of a quorum, then we should address it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, we can uh, move it. To what? I mean, you, you, we, we want to have a little space between meetings, and we're kind of crowded up against um, August with the two-week two <coughs> two week cycle, so it's a little difficult not to have it during the, during the, uh, the week of the, of the third, which is that week. Um, so you only have Thursday and Friday. You're off the whole week? Yeah. Um, 
So, right. so it's right. that way. It's fine. I just I, wanted I, to make no, sure. No, no, it's, it's oh, thank a you. No, that's, that's, that's the purpose of this. Week to yeah, I understand. And then a lot of people do take vacation during the 4th of July weekend. It comes on a weird day. Yeah. Well, um, we could. Can we move to, uh, to um, 11 and 25 and then 8 and 22? Because that still gives us a week. July, just push July and August one week. Mm. You can, you can do it. You, you can, can do yeah, that. You, you, can, you can do and, it. And this, and this way, the last board in August would be the twenty second. You, you, you can do that. And that leaves us a week before the fourth. So mm. we're we're back to. I do think it's generally better not to like plan when if we already I, I, know that Stephanie can't be here. It might have, I mean, it's a, it's a, if it's easy to change it so that yeah. starting off knowing that somebody's not going to be here and it'll be the first meeting so with a new I, board I, potentially. Yeah, so July, uh, uh, supposing July 11 and 25, and then August 8 and 22nd. 8 and, 22nd. and then we'll have the week of the 28th of August, and then we'll have Labor Day, and we'll resume on the 5th. Okay. Okay. So, so. All right. Okay. All right. Good job. All right, so that's the only change I'm hearing. Anybody else? So I was a bit confused with November. It's the month after October. Thank you. Burn. Is it the one just bef after October and before this summer? <laughs> Sometimes. So there's a lot of coloring in November, and and I could different size squares. And, yeah, <laughs> it's so like I'm easily as you can complex see, I'm easily code. confused. And, you know, I have to agree with you. It's not an important meeting on the eighth. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. You can make fun of me. No, it's fine. No, no. It's, what is on the eighth? Public record. It, it, there's no. a lot of um, meeting. It's just not a long or important one. It's so so. <laughs> So let's make it long and important. Me a <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's the purple? Oh, it's the annual town meeting. If you look at the if you look at the legend on the lower right, you'll Thank see you. there's an annual town meeting and election there. So we would have the what's board green, meeting on Bob, the eighth. With the legend? Mm. It was green. It was green. Am I colorblind? I see purple. Anyway, um, I get it. The, the seventh, the seventh, is, we have had meetings before on election day. We have done right. that, but they're proposing it was proposed here is the Wednesday the eighth and the twenty first, which puts us into Thanksgiving week. Oh, it's blue. I guess it just looks green. Well, yeah, it's, it's the eighth. Oh. Is, it, it's a tiny. It's, it's a very so, short meeting. That's going to be the unimportant meeting. <laughs> the unimportant meeting. But okay, so let's solve November. But then we have to solve June then as well. June? Yeah, because we need to have a board right after the election, right? We do, the 20th. We usually we do it the day or, or, or the day after, didn't we? I don't think it has to be. It doesn't, it doesn't have, have to? It's within a week. Okay. I believe is the way the charter was written. Are we talking about November or June? I no, believe June. within the charter. I'm trying we, to confuse in the, you in the days past, we had were required to have a open town meeting on the, within a week of election. And in that open town meeting, it was when board chairs and vice chairs and attorneys were appointed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so we, you could, you know, it, it's up to y'all, but it, it, we could stay with the schedule as it is here. Okay. It's up to you. Is, is November okay with the, th I mean, the only complication here is Thanksgiving week, but other than, you know, it's the Tuesday before, I don't, I don't care, but unless, you, unless you all do. And, the Tuesday before doesn't bother me too much, mm -hmm. but, but I'm, I'm happy to do whatever. Okay. I, mean. I suggest we make the changes to July and August, August and, and leave and it to the status okay. quo. And remember, in advance notice to the public, we can always make changes during the year. Okay. So uh, if, there only, if there's no other comments, I would make a motion, have a request a motion with those two, uh, two months changed, please. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting calendar with the exceptions to the changes july will be the 11th and 25th the august will be moved the 8th and the 22nd perfect perfect second, second. thank you tom um any further comment board all those in favor five zero thanks a lot let me get back to the agenda <clears throat> Okay, the uh, 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 third item we have is the previously um, uh, tabled uh, appointment of cemetery committee members. Um, I believe where we were at, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I usually am. Uh, there were two openings currently. Okay. On the on the uh, cemetery committee, is that correct? Two terms. 
two terms. Expiring. Two terms then expire. Then, yeah, so technically open. Okay. But. Okay. okay. Re recommendation. Well, um, once again, there's lots of interest. Um, Sophie's more recently been at the, we, we co liaison that committee along with the library board yeah. and sort of tag team back and forth. Um, I don't, did anything come up at the meeting that we should be aware of? They, they asked about it actually, and because Owen was there and asked the, the status whether he was re-upped or not. And I told him, I just gave them an update that we had opened the process again because we wanted to make sure that people who wanted to apply had the chance to do so. So, so, th so they want to know. What so then Jana said that she reached out to the people who had um, applications on file and was able to get in touch with uh, Nancy. Yep. Um, that was the one I was kind of concerned about before because she had done a nice application and um, she said she was still interested. Um, and then Stewart's application, um, nobody has spoken with him. That's just in there again. Um, I would say that um, with Stewart, he does participate um, and has lots of knowledge. He's a Parks and Rec employee. Right. And so since the cemetery committee has a contract with the Parks and Rec department to do mowing, um, it definitely makes sense if, if Beth or you know, who's ever in charge wants to send a staff representative or you know, the cemetery committee wants to request a staff representative, then they can decide to send Stewart and he can participate that way pretty easily. Oh, I see. Um, so that makes more sense to me rather than, um, you know, since the cemetery committee has a contractual relationship with the Parks and Rec Department, yep. it should really be the head of, you know, the department yeah. head that kind of defines how that is going to sure. work. And I think Stewart has been going. So, um, then I would say that um, Samantha, I know, was, she was interested in any committee. I talked to her about whether she wanted to do the Conservation Commission. She was a little bit more busy now than when she had initially applied. Um, Jeff is the current chair, so uh, Jeff, I think, is an obvious choice yeah. to um, re-up. And then um, there are a couple more terms coming up in June. June, July. So there's going to be another opportunity. I would like to see us um, give Nancy an opportunity. She's been, you know, had been waiting with her application last time we put Owen on um, for that year term. Owen, I'm sure, won't be shy about continuing to go to the meetings and, and help out. And if he wants to you know, the meetings are open to the public. So I guess I would propose that for tonight we um, put Nancy and Jeff um, for those two terms and that okay. we encourage everybody else to continue participating as they okay. wish. Okay. And with the awareness that there are two more Both spots coming up, um, coming up in June. Any other comments from the board? Otherwise, we can move to approve. I like that. Do you want to make a motion or? Oh, I, I, thought, I meant for that Sorry. to be a motion. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Long-winded. Okay. I would move that we appoint Nancy, what is her last name again? Noise. Nancy Noyes and Jeff Soupforth to two, three, is it three year terms on the cemetery committee? It is three. Three, yeah. No. Second. Three. Second. Oof, motion made and second. One. I don't like this choosing. I understand. So. Any further discussion, board? All's in favor, three zero. Uh, uh, you mentioned earlier about um, co uh, liaison. Is, are we clear on this committee yep. uh, who the appointees are? Is there anybody else interested in being part of this? I oh, wouldn't mind being part of the cemetery committee. I know. Got, I feel like I've got a lot of other like stuff and. Happy I, to relinquish it to you if you want. Yeah. Would, it's inter I, it's I would, interesting. Yeah. It's it's a very. I mean, I'm still interested, but. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just sure? laughing about how quickly everyone's like, oh, you're interested. I know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now I'm like, no, I think maybe I don't. <laughs> no, I think it's great. No, it's great. I mean, it's, yeah, I Not feel bad that I sometimes can't make it and there's between the, yeah, we should we, we have spread to, around the committees a little. We had yeah, exactly. because we were short yeah. on yeah. one other that isn't yeah. 
super active. So. Yeah, that's Perfect. I mentioned it because we have two new members of the boards and yeah. we don't want to just assume everything is as it was. In yeah. cases of interest and Stephanie expressed it, so what I'm hearing is and we don't need to move on of just designating Stephanie and Sophie as our co liaisons to the well, I'm happy committee. to tag team if you want to. Uh, I have no problem. So, with so that do at all. if you can or Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> all right. I'm happy to say cool. I have no idea. The uh, when they the, <laughs> Yeah, it's a very light schedule. There you go. Yes. Uh, anyway, <laughs> on to the last item on our action item list is the approval of the traffic calming policy. As you may recall, we had this as a discussion item a couple of weeks ago and made some comments on it. I think I believe Audra has made some slight modifications to it for the board's approval. Maybe you could just summarize that. Any, ch any changes of significance, Audra? Yeah, so there was um, discussion around. Um, if a neighborhood is to petition the board to consider their street for a traffic calming project, what would be the you know the threshold for the you know amount of people that we we'd need to see interest from? And so there was a lot of discussion and a desire to sort of leave that open to say something like the majority of residents on the street. So that change was made. Um, there was a reference to an appendix that was taken out, and aside from that, it's pretty much the same. Okay. Um, I just want to add, uh, I think a week after we had this meeting, there was a very interesting article in the New York Times about how all over the United States, the, the State Department of Transportation have been prioritizing traffic throughput and, and vehicles, mm -hmm. and they're starting to change the, their uh, point of view and their perspective by really looking more into uh, pedestrian and bicycles. And there's a, so, so, so I, I'll send it to you and maybe we can attach it because I think it's a good reference. Mm -hmm. And there's also a recent study that showed that unfortunately the United States is the leading country in, in the Western world in terms of traffic deaths. Um, and we can't seem to, to get it down. So I think it's really timely to talk about traffic calming policy mm -hmm. and to start thinking about enhancing pedestrian safety and, and, and bike safety and mm -hmm. share the public good uh, and, and increase protection for people. So, so thank you, Audra. Absolutely. Thank you all. Are there any comments on the, on the draft that's in our packet board? There are none. Uh, do, Tom, did you have Do we question? actually have an evaluation process where, I mean, I understand it varies from instance to instance, mm -hmm. but um, uh, identifying what we're going to do actually for, I understand the value of keeping it fairly open as well, mm -hmm. but what we're going to do to identify how we are going to study the traffic pattern, for instance, pneumatic strips. Or, or, um, so we, we don't have the strips, but we'll have two of the radar boards that take uh, both speed and um, traffic volume. So we'll, we'll set those out as we always do. But also, because it's coming from the planning department, we're also going to do like a conflict density analysis. So we'll look at, you know, what are the generators of traffic in the neighborhood. So, you know, one, I think a good example that'll probably be the first one to come up if anything comes up is C Street. Mm -hmm. And so when you're looking at a, a street like C Street, you can't ignore the fact that our largest private sector employer, which is Lyman Morris, is at the end of that street and it's a major traffic generator for that neighborhood. So, you know, you'd look at things like that as well as how is the street configured, how close are dwellings to the street, um, you know, does it have sidewalks? Does it have park on street parking? You know, what's the geome geometry of the street? Um, is it a connector for like a, you mm -hmm. know, a school or some other major feature of, of the community that people walk to, things like that. So, you know, we're not just gonna be looking at traffic counts and speed, but also how is that street used? How is it set up? Mm -hmm. And all those factors and, and trying to figure out what the best solution is there. Mm -hmm. So we own those boards? Yeah, uh, we had one and we're gonna purchase a second one. Okay, and those will be deployed by police department or? They're the ones who set them out, yeah, yeah. Allison. Um, <laughs> sort of along similar lines. At some point, I would love to get um, kind of like the, a basic primer on how they decide where to put those and the 
threshold that's used for determining what counts as speeding or what doesn't, or just a little bit more about sort of like the science behind it and best practices and how. Do you um, mean as it, as it relates to like um, enforcement programs? I guess it largely it's been, I mean, in the past what's happened is people complain about speeding in a certain area, then they put those out, and then there's some kind of a report that is generated that we don't see it. really never gets discussed. Like, I've seen them occasionally, but I've always yeah. been left with a lot of questions. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, people ask me, well, they put it here, and that's, you know, doesn't, isn't a good place to put it because of X, Y, or Z, or um, just, I, I assume there's some kind of training that happens, and they, there's a science to, well, to where they, you know, put all of this, and how they evaluate speed, and how they make sure that it's not just gauging the speed that people are going right at an intersection or right. how they... Yeah, and I, I would say that um, the way that we'll be using them for like a traffic calming study will be different than how the police department uses them for, you know, uh, trying to determine enforcement priorities right. because, you know, one of the things that I would like to get away from is the whole 85th percentile methodology mm -hmm. where you know, speed limits are set by what the 80th, 85th percentile is determined to be. Um, you know, the, but there, uh, if you look at like um, traffic planners are moving more towards looking at, you know, what's, what's sort of the average and then who, like what's the highest end of it. So, you know, what, what are the, the worst offenders and why is that happening? Right. And, and trying to get away from you know, what we've been doing, which is setting it at the 85th percentile. So you have a, a street that was 30 miles per hour and you're finding, okay, well, the 85th percentile is 35 miles per hour. So people start kind of speeding up and speeding up and the speed limit all of a sudden starts creeping up. Right. This, you know, the, the assumption that eight, the 85th percentile that most people or 85% of drivers will choose a safe speed on their own. Right, and like the posted limit has nothing to do with the behavior itself, which, mm -hmm. which is, I, it's, they found that to be untrue. So I think that for the purpose of, you know, this traffic calming project, we'll be using that data a little bit differently than how, you know, a police department would use it for enforcement or how right. DOT would use it for setting speed limits. Right. More for traffic control rather than speed control. Right. Just a subtle difference in terminology. Mm. Trying to really figure out what's going on on that yeah, particular street that's it's, driving. It's, it's a complicated equation. It's, 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 it's obviously, MDOT has nine criteria they use when they evaluate a, a study of a, if they evaluate our mountain street thing, they'll, they'll apply those nine criteria, only one of which is speed. Right, but, yeah. but in any case, I think it's a good point that we have access to the data. Yes. Yep. And that whenever we do a traffic calming study, mm -hmm. that we, we have a debrief in, at the board or, or some session so that people can know. Sure. And sure. Um, I think a few months ago... You might want to have the microphone a little closer, too. I can't hear myself. Um, I think a few, a few months ago, Tom made a, a point about having baseline data and before we do an initiative or an intervention, I think it would be really good also if we get into the habit of doing sure. that because or else we don't know what we're measuring. Right. So part of the whole package. Yes. With that, any other comments on the policy itself? Well, that, I, I think just in, on the broader point, I wanted to also bring up seasonal, both for analysis mm -hmm. and calming measures. And we should take into account, and I don't know if maybe it's addressed in here somewhere, I didn't see it, if there's any seasonal variations. It says that it would be a year-long study. Yeah, yeah. It, okay, good. It, it, good. If it isn't, Tom, it's not accurate, frankly, because we know we have street problems only in the summer here and not in the winter. Yeah, some, right? well, well, there, the traffic volume varies, is higher, much higher in certain streets in our town in the, in the summer than it is in the winter. So, sure. so if, you do a, if you do a study in the winter, it's not indicative of there being a problem or not. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so Sounds with good. that, do I have a motion to approve the policy? I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion made and second. Any further comments, discussion? All those in favor? 5-0. Thank you, Audra. Thank you for correcting that or changing, modifying it. Um, to our fifth item, which is uh, Audra management reports. Yes. So um, 
I was supposed to have a meeting today with, or supposed to set up a meeting for tomorrow, rather, with um, Northeast Mobile Health Services. I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard uh, that the uh, Penn Bay Hospital, who was utilizing uh, Northeast for interfacility transfers, has contracted with North Star Ambulance to do a lot of those interfacility transfers because they were having difficulty. Have, um, Northeast just couldn't staff ambulances to be available for those interfacility transfers while also providing uh, 911 services to the four communities that have contracts with them. And Northeast prioritized the contracts with the communities over, you know, um, being able to do those interfacility transfers whenever the hospital needed them. So that led the hospital to um, that relationship that they have with North Star Ambulance. And there were some rumors going around about what that would mean for Northeast in, in this region. And so I, I received a call today from Rick Petrie, who's their uh, chief operating officer, and he just wanted to assure the four town, or the two town managers and the two town administrators that they're committed to staying in this area and honoring the contract. And there's no um, imminent, I think, closure of Northeast. They just wanted to put everybody's minds at ease and um, sort of dispel any rumors that had been going around about that. Right, so right. I wanted to communicate that to everyone just in case you had heard anything or had any questions about that. I, I think that they still um, would like to meet with us because, you know, for for those of you who are around when we did this study, which was in the middle of the pandemic, so even if you were here, you probably forgot about it. and. And a lot of other people probably don't even know that it happened, but there, there was a study that was done jointly between the four communities and Penn Bay Hospital in regards to um, ambulance services and you know the relationship the towns have to the hospital and how, because we all relied on Northeast, our fates were really tied together in that regard. Sure. And what the communities could do as well as the hospital could do to make sure that we were all getting the sort of service that we needed to transport patients that needed to right. go to the hospital or be sent to other facilities right. after they um, got out of the emergency room. So that sort of was the study that led to all of the work that the fire department is doing to transition over to, to doing um, uh, you know, first responder service as well. And so I think that, you know, in, in regards to how that's all um, shaken out with the hospital, Northeast would still like to make sure that they're giving us regular updates and, you know, everybody's aware of what everyone else is doing and what that's going to mean for everybody's long-term planning when it comes to emergency medical services. Uh, so that's the EMS update. Um, we've been getting a few emails from some of the uh, building owners around the um, Montgomery Dam imp impoundment about how the gate's being managed. And so I just wanted to let everyone know that Dave St. Laurent, our uh, dam control agent, has been writing back to the property owners, just letting them know why you know, the gate is open and what's being done. A lot of it has to do with weather and you know, wanting to make sure that um, the gate is open in preparation for the lake drawdown because that's still something that we have to keep an eye on to make sure that the lake levels are where they need to be in preparation for the winter. So whenever we do a lake drawdown, we have to open up the Montgomery um, Dam impound uh, the gate so that you know we're not accidentally flooding any of the buildings there. And uh, also the bottom board on the gate that was broken this summer broke again. So that needs to be repaired. So it's, it's going to further be drawn down so we can fix that board again and armor it a little bit so, uh, better than it has been so that we don't have to worry as much about that or do things to lessen the probability of that happening in the future. Um, I had a meeting right before Thanksgiving with the new owner of uh, the Knox Mill. Uh, we had a really good discussion about um, the parking lot lease purchase agreement. So that, um, you know, I I'm going to propose at some point that in preparation for the June town meeting, we consider purchasing that lot outright instead of doing, you know, the 
the remainder of the 15-year lease purchase agreement. I just think that, you know, as time goes by, some of these agreements get forgotten about. So I think that if we can purchase that land outright, subdivide it, and everybody moves forward, it will just be much cleaner, easier. Um, we can plan for what we want to do with it and, and feel pretty good about any sort of capital investment that we make in, in that lot. And um, also, you know, he's he's very interested in better utilizing that building. I'm, I'm not sure if some of you know there's a fourth floor that's yeah. attic storage space right now that right. Um, it would it could easily be converted into more apartments. And you know, the business model for that facility is uh, long-term rental units. So it's one of the you know, I mean. I'd say as as rental units go in Camden, they're they're fairly middle of the road affordable. So I think mm -hmm. you know the more of that type of housing that's available, the better it is for sure. Camden. So I'm I'm pretty excited to work with him on on that plan. There's also some other space within that entire complex that's uh, unfinished space and underutilized space that he's very interested in converting into residential. Uh, long-term rental units and um, there might be some work that we need to do with them on you know ordinance amendments to try and make that work uh, and it, it has to do a lot with the ground floor residential commercial issue so um, it was yeah very very positive glad to have him as a member of the community very experienced in property development and managing rental units which is perfect in terms of what's needed here right now Oh, and I also um, went to the Mid-Coast Council of Governments um, annual meeting where they did the strategic planning and really good discussion on how as a region, and we're talking all the way from um, Belfast to Brunswick, we can be more collaborative and competitive in securing some of the large federal funding that's, you know, potential that's, that's available. So that's things like, you know, us, Rockland, Bath, Brunswick, uh, I forget who else. We've all got um, projects where we would like to redo our public landings or whatever the other communities call them, but it's all basically the same thing. Damra Scott is another community. So how can, instead of us individually competing for that money and competing against each other for it, can we start looking at like much bigger grant projects where it's all of us putting in together which would, I think, make us much more competitive as a region because we're able to talk about, you know, our, how our different facilities have, you know, different purposes and functions and are important as a system and not just as individual um, amenities for individual communities. What a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? That's, that's my updates. That's good. a lot of good stuff. Select board reports. Tom, do you have anything you wanted to mention? Um, I did go to a planning board meeting, um, I think it was right before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. um, and they primarily addressed um, 5 Mountain Street, which is the old High Mountain Hall. Uh, looks like the Bay Chamber Converse, uh, or Bay Chamber Concerts has a, um, some exciting stuff going on in there, and concerts upstairs, and lots of good stuff. Um, so, a nice addition to the town when they get it done, I think. I think I agree. Stole it from Rockport. It's very exciting, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know the timeline on the project, but I think they're hoping to have some music in there next summer. Oh, I, mean, I think you're right. Did they secure the funding? I think you're right. Yeah, that project's a go. They're, it's they're fully building. Funded. Oh, yeah. Wow. As far as I know. I mean, yeah. They're, as far as I know. They're too, in the process yeah. of it. it. The only reason it went before the planning board is there's a, a cubic foot addition, a second floor on the north side of the building. Oh. Be awesome. Oh, yeah. Very oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. But the construction is quite far along, actually. It is. Yep. Good. Allison? That, oh, that intersection, um, thinking about, I was recently looking through the downtown master plan, again, because of the Elm Street stuff, and that is in that Mountain Street, High Street, whatever intersection is another one that's been identified as pretty bad for pedestrians. And oh, yeah. I know it can't be really part of their site plan review for this project, but just for sort of reminds me as more people are, you know, going there, we should be revisiting that, like, you know, some of these master planning documents that 
a lot of it still, even though it was done in like 2012, a lot of it is still really relevant and like, it, reminding ourselves of that. That's a good point. Um, it, did, it was not part of the site plan review. Uh, uh, parking did come in, but um, middle schoolers do take classes there oh. mm -hmm. after school at Bay Chamber. Um, so we'll have more, more foot traffic both year round, particularly in the summer during concerts, but yep. kids too. Is that Mountain too. Street issue again? Yep. Yep, something to, can, to keep in the back of the, our minds as we, we talk point. about Good point. walking community. Allison, do you have anything you'd like to report? Um, yeah, there's a Conservation Commission uh, meeting tomorrow. Um, a lot of energy on the Conservation Commission to, um, as often happens with committees, just, um, you know, everything technically is, if you expand it, could fall underneath the Conservation Commission. So. Um, been sort of encouraging them. One of the, th what the select board initially designated was um, wanting them to focus on stormwater and street trees, um, and there has been a lot of focus mm -hmm. on that. Um, there's also a lot of interest in a number of other things, you know, ranging from invasives to um, working with Rockport to you know all kinds of things, and so. Um, we're kind of trying to sort through a little bit how to make sure that, you know, committees are in their, you know, specific committee time. There's, you know, the select board kind of knows what everybody's working on and we're um, prepared to support or collaborate with that. Um, and that if they want to do more things that there's no reason that, you know, people that know each other through the committee you know, they can work on things, but it doesn't all necessarily have to be through the Conservation mm -hmm. Commission because it's starting to, like, scope of things to take on is um, expanding. But um, one of the things that we have been focusing on that we talked about before is identifying some areas of town that um, would be appropriate for, like, a resource protection overlay. We have shoreland zoning in, like, our major... Um, you know, McGonagall River, McGonagall Lake, Cosmer Pond, like the, the big ones, but little streams like Daly Brook, a lot of these smaller streams that we're actually having stormwater problems with already don't have any kind of special protection. And if they were to be developed a lot more around there, there would be you know, significant problems. So looking at the beginnings of like uh, recommendations for an additional resource protection overlay, and, oh, the other thing is um, I, trash cans. I'm getting a lot of questions about how we go about, it seems like in the winter, if all sure. of a sudden, yeah. um, all the recycling tends to go away or a certain amount of the recycling and then a lot of trash <laughs> cans too. We already are kind of short on trash cans. It feels like we've talked about this before and there was supposed to be this new era of, as we try to encourage Camden to be a year round destination. People keep asking me, why aren't there any trash cans? And there are definitely fewer in winter. Mm -hmm. can, can we just, is that, I don't know what the Russian. appropriate venue to bring that up in is, but. Um, yeah, I've just we that's fine. Problem? That's just we'll just checking. That'd be, that'd be fine. Good idea. That. Always, always good to have answers to questions. Trash cans. Oh, well, that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I would also, I would also like have to decide. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think they have these pretty trash cans that are made of yep. wood yep. that they get that they bring in yep. because they get damaged. They do. But if we could. They're actually holders for the cans. They're wood holders. You're right. They do get damaged we'll by the sidewalk plow. Good. I can say that this is sort of the time of year where you don't have, like, can't do projects. There's no plowing, so things like bringing the trash cans in to f repair them and paint them is this is yeah. what they do right happening. now. They're getting brought in to be. Well, well I'm just I'm just telling you that's part of what they do right now. I'm yeah, not saying um, that's the whole right, reason. Right. Let's yeah. Let, let's let's just take a look at it and just yeah. get, get to it. But anything else from your part? No. Miss Sophie, library. what? Oh, the library. Yeah, I did attend a library um, board meeting, and they've hired a new program director who's also oh. named Julia to replace the Julia who we lost to Rockport. Oh. Um, and 
on, there was, it, was a, it was a pretty light um, okay. meeting. They are going to be returning to a meeting in person uh, or a hybrid oh. Oh. meeting forum. There was considerable discussion about that. Mm -hmm. And, um, but not until January. Oh, I see. They probably should. Oh, them. and yeah. oh, I was going to tell Stephanie. There is not, there is a little bit of unhappiness about uh, Santa not reading uh, at the library and something about the Christmas by the Sea committee making a decision about Hosmer, about uh, it, Santa, Santa reading at the Snow Bowl instead. Um, not really a town issue, no. um, but there was also some discussion about that, okay. um, and Dra I didn't weigh in. I was oh, just listening, yeah. but Santa <laughs> drama. If you have any questions, they can talk to the committee. I was like, oh, the Santa the thing. The headline like, tomorrow. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Santa Claus <laughs> coming to town. Santa, Santa uh, Claus drama at the town board. Yes. Meeting. Sophie, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, I, I attended the cemetery association committee, and um, I, I appreciate that the members always answer my questions because uh, cemetery management is definitely out of my depth, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, but, <laughs> but it, it's super, no, it's super interesting because there's a lot of things actually happening in the cemetery association and management, yeah. so I, I learn a lot and they're patient with me and I'm grateful for that, cool. that's it. Stephanie? Um, I attended a Zoom about the MMA training. Yep. Ooh. Yep. So that was actually kind of interesting. It was a little long winded. <laughs> <laughs> no I was like, do I get like a lot of credits for this? You do. You get a star. <laughs> I'm just saying. It was you, you get one very for long, but they filled the time really well. So um, it was oh, good. Oh, yeah. Um, and then just a reminder that Christmas by the Sea is yeah. this weekend. Um, official start of the parade. So that's pretty interesting if anybody in. On Friday. On Friday. Did I say Saturday? No, okay. no, you said Friday. Okay. Did yes. you say a time? Six o'clock is when it starts. And Holly is still taking um, applications to be in the parade. I think the last count we were up to 22. That's what I heard. So that's pretty awesome. That's great. Yeah, I, know, great. I know one of them intimately. That's great. But uh, good. That's good. Good. It'll be a fun night at 6 o'clock. Is Diana in it? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Some of her costumes are coming out. Anyway, uh, we, 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 we divert to me. Anything else? That's all I have. Okay. Um, I was going to mention Christmas to see also. It's, it's an exciting weekend for yeah, all ages, awesome. I think. And the, for, for, the parade is actually fun. It actually yeah. is. You know, for, we're a small town. We know that. But it's actually a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy it every year. The new electric school bus, I heard, is going to be featured in the... Yeah. 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 What about the door issue? With the electric school bus? Yes. The yeah. door doesn't open up when the school bus goes up the hill. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're, fi they're fixing it, but it was a, that's why the cemetery association is so interesting. You learn a lot of things. Oh, yeah, they have their comments about that. <laughs> well, a small comment I would make is, uh, in addition to enjoying Christmas by the Sea, it looks like uh, C Street Route 1 project is just about done today. Uh, it's finally, you know, the elimination of the one-way traffic control, which means more to me than you all. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're on the other side of the fence, literally. And it but, affects uh, you. We I haven't looked. I haven't looked over the berm yet. I haven't looked over the berm yet. Uh, it's very upsetting. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the good news that part's done. But, lose some. Yeah. Other than that, um, that's that's all I wanted to mention myself. With that, I would um, like to uh, entertain a, uh, a motion from the board to leave the select board meeting and and to uh, um, uh, enter. A, an executive session under MRSA 405, parent 6, parent E, legal rights and duties. So, so moved. moved. Second. M motion made and seconded it. All those uh, second, all those favor. <laughs> Thank you. We will um, take a few minutes to close down, and Audrey, we probably should check on.